Okay, so the topic, like I said, for the video is going to be uh, overcurrent protection device. So overcurrent protection devices is a fancy name for fuses and circuit breakers. In the power industry, Adam, you can protect the system from many things. You can protect them from under over voltage. If the voltage goes so uh, low, you can trip um, a contactor to protect you from under over voltage. You can protect from under over frequency. Um, the most common protection for any power system goes and the cheapest um, that you can install and the most commonly required a protection is the overcurrent protection. Very simple, very easy. You have a circuit breaker, like a 15 amp circuit breaker, and you're pulling a 12 amps out of it load, and you put it on a number 14 conductor. So the, the NEC code book guys require you to, before you, fix, before you feed this 12 amp load at any voltage, you are to protect the conductors as well as the equipment from uh, over current condition, over current condition. So any comments guys about this one? Very, very, very important. When I was doing all the calculation with you guys for the last couple of weeks, every time I drew a one line diagram, I always start at about what? With an over current protection device, over current protection device. They're fancy name for two things, fuses and circuit breakers. So that's what the topic that we're gonna be doing. Um, and you see requirements, so what we talk about, guys, Article um, 240 is the article that talks about overcome protection devices for equipment and conductors. We'll talk about requirement for fuses and circuit breakers. If you are to install a circuit breaker or a fuse in a, um, to protect your power system, what are the requirements? We'll, we'll touch on these requirements. And then there are five possible conditions for circuit, any power circuit, any electrical power circuit, as a matter of fact, any control power circuit too, not just um, power circuit, any control or power circuit have typically five conditions, guys, we're gonna go through. You're familiar with these conditions from normal operation into short circuit. They call the normal operation to short circuit. Um, various types and operations of fuses and circuit breakers. We'll talk about this one as part of the, U, the fuse and circuit breakers. Um, when you have uh, uh, circuit breakers, guys, they come in, in multiple poles. Every time we talk about a single pole, this is a phase or a hot, a phase or a hot. Two poles is two phases and two hots for circuit breakers. We'll talk about this one too. Interrupting rating, interrupting rating of circuit breakers uh, is so important as when you put a circuit breaker, you need to be able to understand how much this circuit breaker can interrupt under a normal um, operating condition, which is the normal voltage for that system. Interrupting rating of circuit breakers and fuses is the single most, well, one of the single most important things about these uh, these devices. Uh, short, calculating short circuit. When we, uh, um, as you guys move with me in the spring, we will be doing short circuit calculation uh, using SKM PTW and um, not, not just simple formula. So you're gonna do a lot of uh, calculation, including arc flash calculation. But today we'll just touch on that one. There's, uh, how many of you guys have heard of series rated panels? Anybody ever, ever heard of a term series rated? Anybody knows what a series rated panel is? See that panel on the wall here? That could be a series rated panel or a fully rated panel. So we're gonna talk about, what, what is the term you're gonna hear when you go work in the industry, you, as you work in the industry, you're gonna hear the term series rated panels versus fully rated panels. What's the difference between them? What do they do for a living? And price-wise, which one is more expensive? Um, there's something, another term that we, we call it as selective coordination and non-selective coordination. Very fancy name for localizing the interruption of the power up on the existence of an overcurrent protection condition, um, which we'll be talking about in a second. Okay, the article that talks about overcurrent protection is so important in the NEC code book, the concept of overcurrent protection device that the NEC does allocate a whole article for it, which is Article 214. Overcome protection device must be provided for all types of circuits, including service, branch, as well as feeders. Um, so every time you have a service entrance conductors or a feeder conductor or a branch circuit conductor, you must land 
these conductors on a circuit breakers or um, the ahead of these conductors must be on a circuit breakers right before they receive their power. Um, so when we size fuses and circuit breakers, guys, we talked about sizing them. When we size these, we size them based on the ambicity of the of conductors and equipment. For example, if I have a 15 amp circuit breaker, I um, I know that I can I can put number 14 from the tables AWG, and non-continuous I can pull 15 amp load. Here's my load. I can pull 15 amp non-continuous load out of that. Um, out of that um, a 15 amp circuit breaker. So number 14 is capable of carrying up to 15 amps under normal operating condition and restrictions of the code. Any comments, guys, any questions about matching the conductors to the over competition device uh, with temperature and bundling adjustment li like we did before? A couple of things about the over competition devices, guys, um, um, that we'll talk about. Uh, in terms of, there's a couple of articles that talk about the overcompetition devices. So these are these are probably a lot of references that talks about it. And if you look at them, um, some of them talks about the maximum overcompetition device for branch circuits, uh, 210.24, uh, maximum overcompetition device for branch circuits, like 15 amp circuits and 20 amp circuits, and based on the conductor you are landing in. Um, according to the ambicity of the conductors, 240.4 will tell you that you have to size your overcompetition device based on the ambicity of the conductor. So a number 14 conductor, you cannot land more than a 15 amp fuse on it. Um, maximum overcompetition device show, um, uh, of a smaller conductor, 240.4D, that will tell you that, uh, that number 10 and number 12 and number number 10, 14, 10 and, and um and 12 have limitation on fifth or, or limitation of 15, 20, and 30 amps on them. So all these all these guys are explained in page uh, 618 of all of them. Uh, standard 240.6. You guys have used 240.6. That's a standard overcompetition devices um, that we use. Um, overcompetition device shall every hot conductor must have an overcompetition device in it. That's a rule. Um, the conductors must be at the point where they receive where they receive you have to put it right at the point where they receive their um, um, their power um, if you have a grounded conductor karen you cannot put an over competition device a fuser circuit breaker on a grounded conductor that's a rule there's some exception if you're using it as an overload for motors that's an exception um, over competition devices shall be accessible you have to put them in a place where you can have access to them or at least authorized people have access to them um, you cannot put circuit breakers guys in an ignitable in an easily ignitable materials like closets closed closets you can't put a circuit breaker right there because you can if it sparks and arcs you can burn your building uh, you can't put them in a bathroom over competition device so these are all rules about the over competition device not in a bathroom um, not over steps so can you put a panel guys over steps over a landing yes not over steps so that's another rule if you have a dwelling the maximum the minimum over competition device for a single family dwelling is 100 amp over competition device that's also a requirement in the code um okay so the over competition device have to have an overload capability too and if you have an over competition device in a panel and the panel is a service, it has to be bolted on that service or part of the service. So these are basically a couple of rules of regulation that related to the um, to the uh, fuses or circuit breakers over competition devices. Any comments, any questions? All of them guys are explained in page 618 of the electrical wiring residential. Any comments? Any questions, Derek, my friend? So these are. Like I said, this is not the first time you guys will hear about uh, over competition devices. We will be doing coordination. We will be doing arc flash. We will be doing a lot of stuff. But every time you hear about over current protection, over current protection, you have it has to come to your um, your mind when we do over competition device. Three things that will transfer to over load. It protects you from overload protection from short circuit and protect you from ground fault 
So every time you guys hear the term, somebody say overcurrent protection device, like a fuser circuit breaker, you in the back of your mind, you have to understand that this piece of equipment is to protect your conductors and equipment from an overload condition, which is what's an overload condition. If the equipment direct is rated to, if the conductor is rated to carry 15 amps and all of a sudden you are pulling 30 amps out of it, that's called overload condition, right? symbol short circuit what's a short circuit if you have face to face you grab phase a to phase b and you make them touch each other intentionally or accidentally you get yourself into a short circuit you eliminated the impedance of the load the current becomes extremely high like in tens of times of the rated current and that's that will create a short circuit condition the circuit breaker will see it and trip ground fault when you have a hot or a phase conductor touching a grounded object as an equipment grounded conductor or enclosures, you get yourself a lower, typically a lower short circuit, a lower um, uh, overcurrent, overcurrent than the short circuit, a little bit lower. Okay, there are five conditions for circuit. These are no, no, nothing new to you guys. No operating condition with the current uh, within the capability of the circuit and or the equipment. So we'll talk about this one. Normal operating condition, Karen, you're looking right above your head. These lights are being turned on right now. They are under normal operating condition with the circuit. Everything is working good. The ambiguity that's being pulled out of these conductors and, and circuit breakers are within the capability of these conductors, equipments, and circuit breakers. Any comments, guys, about normal operating condition? We'll see you in a second. Overload condition. Overload condition when you are pulling more current than the equipment and or the conductor can handle. Um, to handle safely again. So that's your normal uh, the overload condition. Short circuit condition when you bypass the load because of a short circuit condition and you go between two phases. Between two phases. Bypass the load and you go between fa two phases. Ground fault condition, guys, is when you go between phase A and the ground, any grounded object. We have a couple of, um, so these are, and the last condition of the circuit is open circuit. Open circuit is when you, it's like when you have the switch and you turn the switch off. That's your open circuit condition. Here's a couple of pictures for each one of them. Here's a normal, a normal uh, look at that normal circuit condition, guys, for this circuit. I have a 24 ohm load and a 15 amp fuses face to phase load it looks like at 240 i want to bring to your attention guys the impedance of the load the impedance of the conductors their impedance of the conductors right in here and right in here and the impedance of the soaps so when you do your ohms law you guys did it with gary right or some of you did it did the basic with gary or with others when you when you do ohms law look how simple this is you take the 240 and divide it by all the impedances because they're in series, you get yourself a 9.9, uh, 9.987, which is typically, that's why in, in real life, as we ignore, we ignore these when we do calculation, and you end up with approximately 10 amps being pulled out of 15 amp circuit breaker, good to go, you can run forever. Any comments, guys, any questions about this normal operation of this circuit? I have a 10 amps being pulled out of 15 amp circuit breaker. I can pull it forever. The conductors are sized for number 14. I can pull it forever. How do you, can you guys see how you analyze a circuit? You take the voltage divided by all the impedances, AKA the resistors in series. Everybody can see that? So everybody's happy? Now let's go to the second condition, overload. Now I decided, now whom am I gonna pick on? Derek. Derek decided to add two more heaters. Each one of these are heater, heater one, Here's my heater one and heater two. Now, Dirk decided to put two heaters on one circuit. Could that happen? Yeah, the heaters that you guys have in the stairways. So I decided to put two heaters. Okay, when you put two heaters, guys, in parallel, the impedance is one divided by two. So your impedance will be cut by half. Did you guys learn this one in basic? When you parallel two resistors, the impedance will cut, be cut by half. You know how to find the, the equivalent resistors of, of re, uh, equivalent resistor of multiple resistors in parallel. If they're all the same, you take one of them divided by half, by, by their number. So these two are the same. There are two, take one of them divided by two. So the impedance will be cut by half. When you cut the impedance of the circuit by half, the current will double. Your current will double now. So look what happened. So now look at my impedance. The only thing that changed in this circuit is I cut the impedance by half. Divided by the same voltage. Look what happened to the current. My current is double. 
So I end up with a 20 amp being pulled over 15 amp circuit fuse. You could pull these one for a couple of minutes before the circuit breaker or the fuse will open. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We understand what an overload condition is. You basically double the load or add the over, overload condition, guys, goes between, I would say, between 50 to uh, 250 percent overloading that, that device. For the most part, doubling the load is the is um, is what illustrate an overload condition. So the circuit breaker will trip under overload. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We understand the current doubled. Now we have an overload condition. Cool. Okay. Now short circuit condition. Look what happened when we have a short circuit condition. Now we hired Adam to go wire this system. He screwed up, and he grabbed a wire intentionally. Went right. Went. He grabbed the wire. Went right around the load and shunted the load could that happen guys could that happen where you take a wire or some uh, phase a or phase b will will load it okay so in this case guys when you when you short across this then the impedance you're competing with a zero impedance right here in parallel so when you do your math for two resistors in parallel you end up with a resistor of zero so right here you lost the you lost the impedance of your load now, when you lose the impedance of your load, the only impedance in the system is the impedance of the source as well as the conductors. Who cares? Look how small these numbers are. When you divide a 240 by a very small number, you end up with a very high amount of current. You end up with 7.742. So now we're at 7742 amps. 7,000, almost 8,000 amps, right? This is called short circuit condition. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Any comments? Any questions about the short circuit condition? Any comments? Any questions? So you bypass the load. You go face to face. Now, you, you will never do that, guys. That X, that's all typically accidentally happen. That's my short circuit condition. Over ground fault. The ground fault, guys, you're, in, you're pulling conductors in the conduit, and all of a sudden you uh, compromise the integrity of your insulation. Now, your hot conductor my hot conductor is touching the conduits the conduits now i have a condition of a ground fault and the ground fault guys is typically can be it, it can it can range from 50 percent of the short circuit all the way to 100 percent equivalent to the short circuit so it's a little bit lower typically than the uh, short circuit um, amp wise because it depends on the impedance of the conduit and how the impedance of the contact point and so forth any comments guys about the ground fault the ground fault when you have a hot touching a conduit or a box the impedance uh, Derek my friend uh, the current for a ground fault is typically less than the three phase typically less than three phase but it could it could go as high as the three phase but typically this and it it depends on a lot of things because the impedance the contact point impedance the impedance of the conduit and so forth so if you cover the three phase for the most part you're covered okay open phase condition the last condition is open phase condition so we send adam again and he went and he cut grabbed his uh, plier and cut the phase conductor one of the hot conductors cut it open right so now nothing will happen they have zero amps zero amps going through this circuit now that's a safe condition, you, nothing is, is occurring, but of course it's nuisance because the equipment is not operating. Uh, Derek, this is equivalent to turning the switch here off. You're turning, opening the circuit, but under abnormal condition. Can I have thumbs up, Chad, for the five condition of a circuit? This could be three-phase circuit, this could be single-phase circuit, two hots, one hot, uh, and a neutral, three hots with or without neutral. Everybody's okay, Adam? Cool? five condition of the circuit. So if you guys are understanding now, you're gonna help you a lot um, um, as you move forward. Okay, fuses. There is a plug fuses. You guys have seen these little plug fuses. The plug fuses that they use, typically we use them to protect equipments like motors and they're rated not to exceed 125 volts. Um, and they are used used in a grounded. This is now we're talking about types of overcompetition devices, the fuses. They are used on a grounded system, and when the conductors operating at not over 150 to ground, not over 150 to ground. So limitation and the amps on these 
are limited to 30 amps. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? These screw in um, fuses. These are an overcompetition device limited to typically protecting some equipment. We'll look at the picture as we go through. Uh, but look at the limitation on the amps and the voltage. We have a limitation of 120 system all the way to 30 amps. 30 amps. All of them um, have to have type S fuses, guys. They call them type S fuses. And type S fuses limit you, classify you between um, um, two. Uh, 0 to 15 amps, as well as uh, 16 through 20 and 21 through 30. If you guys look at this, will go with number 14 conductor. This will go with number 12 conductor, and this will go with number 10 conductor, right? So what happened when you have a type S fuse, you can, um, you can put 0 through 15 amps, they, they have one type of type S fuses, so you can put any fuse between 0 and 15 amps. It doesn't matter because the conductor is rated for 14, 14, so the maximum is 15 amps. 16 through 20, you land it on a number 12 conductor, so it really doesn't matter what fuse you put there as long as you are between 16 and 20. Same thing for 21 to 30, guys. does not matter as long as you have um, the conductors between um, the landing on it is, one, um, is number 10. And again, for control circuits and so forth, guys, there's so many ranges of fuses that you can buy for control circuits uh, between these ranges. Time current curve. So that's your um, type S fuse. Any guys, any question, guys, about type S fuses? They're 120, 30 amps rated. Time current. How long it takes a fuse or a circuit breaker to open? You guys will be designing and working with your friend Chad with time current curves that looks for fuses, looks like this. So the higher the amps, this is my amps, this is my time. Uh, the higher the amps, the faster the circuit breaker or the fuse will trip. The higher the amps, the faster the circuit breaker or the fuse will trip. Can I get you guys to understand that one? The higher the short circuit or the ground fault, the faster the fuse or the circuit breaker will trip or open. Cool, that's called time current. Um, you guys will be you will be dealing with this with SKM. We have a software that you guys will be using to design. Okay, uh, three types of plug-in fuses. You can have single element time, non-time delay, typically on feeder. Dual element time delay fuses, uh, typically on motors, and loaded link time delay fuses. So these are um, so you can either intentionally delay the trip of the circuit breakers. Um, or the fuses, or 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 not. As we move forward, guys, we will take these into a lot into consideration when we do the short circuit um, and over competition device coordination. But be aware that time when you guys were sizing fuses for me for motors, you were doing non-time delay fuse or time delay fuses. If it's non-time delay fuse, we all, you have to use 300%. Remember for motors, non-time delay fuse. A time delay fuse, we use dual limit time delay fuse, we use 175. Then we have cartridge fuses that goes all the way very high to high amps, high voltages. Same thing, they have the, the same time character secure, same current, is non time limiting. Um, um, with with the non time delay or dual element time delay characteristics, <clears throat> dual element cartridges. Common for motors, like I said, look at the voltage range that you can get them, guys, for fuses. You can get 250 rated to 250. So, Adam, you can, any voltage up to 250, you can load this fuse, at, use this fuse at it. And you can use it up to 600 volt. And even there are fuses, guys, you can go higher than 600 volt. Amp-wise, you can go from 0 to uh, 600 and even much, much higher than 600 for certain uh, fuses. I'm not going to make it, guys, a fuse... Um, um, Cartridge fuses, or so-called cartridge fuses, or knife fuses. Um, there are different classification for them from R to H to CC to G and T. We'll talk about these one a little bit in more details when we go to the commercial industry because it's related to it. Um, so some of them are current limiting, some of them are not current limiting, 
and we'll talk about the application of each one of them as it applies to the industrial. But be aware that there are different types of fuses. The plug-in fuses are limited to 120 system. The uh, cartridge fuses and the knife fuses can go as high as 600 volt and amp wise as high as 6,000 amps. Okay, now, since we're doing dwellings, I want to remind you, we are doing residential yet. So in residential, the most common overcurrent protection device that we use is called thermomagnetic circuit breakers. Now, what the heck are the fuses? There are different type of fuses. There are also different type of circuit breakers, believe it or not. There is electronic circuit breakers. There is thermomagnetic circuit breakers. That's how they sense that there is an overcurrent condition and trip, the tripping mechanism. Some of them is thermomagnetic. Thermomagnetic is the cheapest, easiest, guys, is have a thermal component. It heats up and opens, that's overload, and that magnetic component, the coil, it sees a huge amount of current and bam, it opens for short circuit. That's the most common in dwelling. Electronic circuit breakers, they're very smart. They have a brain on them, right? They have electronic onto them. It sends the current and it decides to trip and overload short circuit to ground fault condition. We'll talk about the electronic as we move forward. We talk about the requirement for circuit breakers, guys. For example, they have to be accessible. They have you can't put them in a closet. You can't put them in a bathroom, and a bunch of other requirements for them. Um, because these are have a thermal component, they are temperature sensitive. So this is what happened, Adam. If you are to put a circuit breaker like one of these in an area that's really hot, expect this circuit breaker to malfunction. So you have to take this into consideration. Because these are, if if the this room is 105 degree, do you think these circuit breakers will start tripping and they are slightly loaded? I mean, close to the full load. These circuit breakers start tripping not because you're pulling um, more current out of them, right? Because the temperature they're too sensitive, they're too hot, um, so they they give you nuisance tripping if the temperature is higher than uh, than normal. Um, now, loading a circuit breaker, guys, 100% continuously is only for listed equipment. For example, if I have a 20 amp circuit breaker, how much current can I carry out of a 20 amp circuit breaker? You can only carry 80% of that one, which is 16 amps, continuously. Can I get you to understand that one, guys? Fuses and circuit breakers, unless they tell you it's 100% rated, circuit breakers, it is rated for 80% continuous. Now, non continuous, Non-continuous, I can take this one and carry 20 amps out of that when I size non-continuous. They're not going to run for 30 amps or uh, three hours or less. Everybody understand that? If it's 100% rated circuit breakers, typically they don't use them, guys. To, well, probably 600 amps or higher, they start using 100. You can use 100% uh, rated circuit breakers, meaning for... Um, continuous operation, I can pull the max of that circuit breaker. Okay, single pole. We have single pole circuit breakers. Again, single pole are used for 120 or 277. In dwellings, we use it for 120. Two pole circuit breakers, again, in dwellings, we're using it for 240. Two pole circuit breakers. Everybody understand? Three pole circuit breakers, typically they're used, what, for three phase system, right? Three phase system. You can have a, a, a split circuit receptacle, guys, and dedicated split wired receptacle, like we did for the garbage disposal, Derek. Remember that garbage disposal and, and dishwasher? We landed one circuit up, one circuit down. You have to, um, any multi wire brine circuit, you, in this case, you have to land, um, you have to have two pole circuit breakers. Any comments, any questions, guys, about the poles of the circuit breakers? Either single pole, two pole, or three pole. In dwellings, we are dealing with only two types: single pole or two pole circuit breakers. Okay, handle times. You can. The code allows you guys to use a, an approved handle. Here's one single pole. Here's another single pole, and you can use an approved handle to tie them together. And in this side, you can use you can use it to. Uh, here's a 240 load. Tie a 240 load, or you can use it to tie two loads. Single phase, 120 load, 120 load, and of course the neutral is coming from here and here. Can I get you guys to understand? You can use two single pole circuit breakers tied together with an improved handle, 
to feed a 240 load like air conditioning, like an AC, as well as two single pole, uh, two 120 loads, as long as the handle is approved. Must be tested and listed for the use of specific manufacturers. So you can't just custom design your silver hand. It has to be tested for that particular manufacturer of circuit papers. Any question guys about that one? That same thing in commercial. We can use them in 28120 system, um, 24120 systems, um, two or three pole tied together to feed 120 loads or 28 loads or 240 loads. Since we're doing dwelling, it's typically 240. There's something called interrupting rating. Interrupting rating is the highest amount, the maximum current that the device can safely interrupt to the energizer circuit, safely. You know what, there's videos guys, if you look at them, if you, if the short circuit is higher than what the circuit breaker is rated for, the circuit breaker will explode. Is that what you want in your system? No, you want if you have a short circuit or ground fault, the circuit breaker will safely interrupt that, that system and you will reset the circuit breaker and move on, right? Or the fuse, change the fuse and move on. So that's the maximum, they call it interrupting rating, interrupting rating. So if, uh, here's very simple guys, very, very simple. If I have, uh, if this is 10,000 amp interrupting rating, 15 amp uh, full time rating, and I have a 12 amp load, and I have a short circuit condition, short circuit condition here, uh, 7.5 thousand amps. So if I have a short circuit condition in this load, 7.5, now two things you will look up. First of all, the load is 12 and the overconditioned device is 15. Under normal operating condition, that's okay. We're not overloading it, right? Second, the short circuit is 7.5K and the interrupting rating of the device is 10. Can a 10 kilo amp big boy interrupt a 7 point kilo amp short circuit yes as long as this number is less or equal to the interrupting rating of the circuit picker you're safe yes sir so for circuit breaker zone is it just the same for uh, short circuit to overload so if you pop no ground side the only difference between short circuit and overload is the amount of current a short but it's, but it's there protected the same way so it's the, Say it again. It's, on... They're protected the same way. It's only on the underground side. Yes. Okay. Always. Always. Overload for motors. Yes. I would say 99.9% .9 of the time. There's some exception where you put them in a grounded conductor, but that's exception. Okay. Always on the hot. Always we are off the hot. Okay. So that's your situation for safely. Now moving into the panels, guys. That panel that you're looking at in the corner, right there. There are two types of panels, fully rated and series rated panels. Um, series rated are less costly. Can I guys get you to highlight the word here? Why would anybody use series rated panels? You're going to see what they are in a second. Dollar wise, cheaper, cheaper. And then we'll talk about why they are related. Okay, look at this panel. I want you guys to look at this panel. This is so-called fully rated panel or fully rated system. The short circuit is a 20.8 thousand amp. So if you take phase A, hot one to hot two, and you tie it together, you will end up with 20.8, right? Um, and uh, the available fault current is 20.8. And the uh, so each one of these circuit breakers, each one of these fuses is rated for 22.5 kilo amp. This is a 22.5 kilo amp. Can I just get you to understand if the branch circuits and the main are rated to handle the short circuit on the branch circuit side, on both sides, this will get you a fully rated system. Does that make sense? If I have a short circuit right here, I'm going to end up with a 20.8 thousand amp, 20.8 thousand amp. The fuse and the circuit breaker are rated for a 22.5 thousand amps, then I'm good to go. Fully rated. The main and the bright circuits. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We fully understand the main and the short circuit are rated to interrupt at that level. That's called fully rated. What's the problem with fully rated? Big dollars. When you have a fully rated system, you're paying big dollars. Because a fuse, 22.5k fuses, is probably 
versus 10k fuses or circuit breakers, you're paying 50% or maybe 25 to 50% more. Okay, look at this. Now, series rated. I want to remind you, why do you use series rated system? You use series rated system because it's cheaper. Okay, series rated system. I have the same system, guys. I have a 13.8 available short circuit. Okay, so if I have right in here, I have a 20.8 thousand amp, a short circuit right in this area. This boy is rated for 22.5 thousand amp, but all these boys are rated for 10,000 amps. Now what the heck would happen? Can you just see that? So these, all these circuit breakers are rated for 10,000 amps. The fuse is rated for 22,000 amp. They call it series rated coordinated guys. The manufacturers test these circuit breakers and fuses or fuses and fuses or circuit breakers and circuit breakers coordinated together. So if the this is the worst short circuit, if the short circuit is 20.8, these will not trip by design and they will wait for the big daddy to take care of business. That's how I explain it. Imagine that man as your the big daddy and these are his kids here. So if the, the battle is more than these kids can handle, so what do they do? They hold until that big boy takes care of business and air up the circuit. Can I have thumbs up, Chad, before they understand that one? We're going to be doing this one, guys, for commercial industrial as well. Okay, now, if the short circuit here is within, like, say, 9.5 kilo amp, now 9.5 kilo amp, Karen, I can, and I'm rated for 10, that's easy. These, these little guys can take care of it. So, by doing it this way, guys, they give you cheap equipment. Where would you use a system like this? Typically, we use it for up to 225 amp panels at different voltages for lights. If you have lights or receptacle. Lights and receptacle panels up to 225 amp panels and sometimes more. Typically, that's where a series rated panel is a big deal. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We fully understand that one. What's the difference? The difference between these two panels, one of them could be... <coughs> The fully rated could be a thousand dollars, guys, and the series rated could be eight hundred or seven hundred. Any questions? Any comments? When we go to the commercial and industrial, guys, we do have a speaker, um, Todd Christensen, from uh, that comes from um, Color Hammer. He goes, if you understand it now, when he comes, hopefully it clicks in. Um, but you have another chance to look at it too. Okay. Any comments? One more time about series and fully rated series rated we will be all the panels that we do karen in um in a residential are series rated all these load centers that we use they are series rated panels by design okay short circuit calculation guys the short circuit when you do short circuit calculation for the system um you need to find the kva of the transformer and the impedance of the transformer, and then the, also the impedance of all the equipment. So that's how much current um, the short circuit will be available. I do have an example for you in a second here. Um, be aware that because of energy efficiency and green buildings, the impedance of the, is becoming very low of these transformers, which means you will have a high um, short circuit condition. A high short circuit condition. We're going to take an example in a second here, guys, how to do that. Um, okay, there's the term panel boards and um, load centers and so forth that you guys, uh, you're going to hear the uh, people dealing with. The panel boards, the NEC code book called them panel boards. The load centers, guys, are a residential cheap alternative of uh, over panel board. They're just smaller. They're made to fit uh, between the studs, 16 inches. They are three and a half deep, three and a half inches deep. So they're special type. When you when you hear the word load center that we use in residential, always remember it's a special type of uh, panel boards meant to be made cheaper, meant to fit between 16 inches studs and uh, as in width as well as depth and three and a half for the two by four um for the uh yeah for the two by four uh lumber that you're going to use there any comments guys any questions about that load center so a special type of panel made to fit um 
you are list them differently. They don't have a lot of gutters in them to pull your conductors. Okay, the last thing I will talk about, guys, is something called selective coordination and non-selective coordination. Selective coordination, if I have a short circuit appearing right above your head in one of these lights, would you like the circuit breaker here to square, or would you like the main of all of the building to square? Right? With hope, only this circuit breaker will trip. So if that circuit breaker to trip, then you have what we call a selective coordination. The circuit breaker or the fuse closest to the fault or the short circuit will trip. Everything else will continue to work. That's called selective coordination. Non-selective coordination, it's a race. If you have a short circuit in that panel, that light above your head, that circuit breaker could trip as well as multiple circuit breakers downstream could trip. That's called non-selective coordination. 99% of the power system that we do in commercial industrial guys, we want it to be selective coordination at at least most of the time, at 90% of the time. So that's um, a few things, guys, about short circuit. Any comments, any questions? Comments, questions? Any comments, any questions? So we talked a little bit, guys, about the, here's that normal operation circuit. We went into um, oops. We went into um, the overload condition circuit. We went to the short circuit, ground fault, open. We talked about here's the fuses, guys. The plug-in fuses with the S type, where it limits you to the amps. Uh, type S15 amps, so you can put up to 15 amps in this fuse. Uh, different um, different plug-in fuses. Here's the fuses rated for 250. Look at the interrupting rating. It's a 100 amp fuse. So these are uh, fuses that can go to a higher voltages at the higher voltages and higher amps. Cartridge fuses. Circuit breakers, guys, single pole, two pole. That's what we typically use. I want to bring to your attention, guys, the interrupting rating. Can you see, Adam, the interrupting rating on this one is a 10,000 amp. The voltage 24120 tells you that this can be the amps on it is 20 amps. I don't know if you guys can see that, and I'm sure you've seen it before. Um, series rated, when you have uh, fully rated equipment and circuit breakers, this is a fully rated, so any shorts, these are very expensive equipment. We use it for mains and so forth, series rated. Same thing for circuit breakers with circuit breakers. Different type of S adapters, guys, to give you different ranges. Um, this is just the interrupting rating, breaker plug-in, the a few things about interrupting rating and a class of the fuses, how much they can interrupt. Fuses, guys, you can get, get, you can find a fuse that can interrupt up to 200,000 uh, amp. Circuit breakers, typically 85 is the maximum. After that, I believe they start to use them. So fuses can um, can do a lot of uh, um, damage for you. Here's comparing, guys, between panels. For example, all the panels must be listed regardless if they are fully rated or series rated. They have to be listed. Short circuit current rating, um, uh, um, adequate for the available fault current, all of them. Uh, must be marked with a short circuit current. That's in 2011. We have to mark them with available short circuit current. Must be marked as a series rated. If your panel is series rated, you must have to have a label like this. Oops. A label like this that says caution series rated combination series rated and you put the amps over here identifying replacement component required so if it's a qo circuit breaker or a qp you have to replace it with a qo or a qp circuit breaker very important or you will um you basically will uh, screw up the uh, rating um for the bill. So the, all of them, guys, the circuit breaker have to be, the interrupting rating have to be high enough to interrupt the the, the available short circuit current. Um, fuses, current limiting. A lot of fuses, guys, come in current limiting. Circuit breaker is typically not. Uh, and we'll talk about current limiting all, as we go. Time current characteristic curve, um, um, data for it's always a good idea to check the time current characteristic curve and you guys in the spring uh, spring project you will be using a time current characteristic curve and doing coordination and arc flash analysis and so forth so this is just the beginning 
If you do me a favor, guys, you read this chapter really good. As we move into the commercial industrial, it starts sinking because when we go there, we start using, doing coordination and so forth. So that's um, that's basically it in terms of uh, what we're going to be covering about this, guys. Any comments? Any questions? Just to summarize, the most important thing in any power lighting equipment as well as control circuit for the most part is the overcurrent protection device. If you don't have an overcurrent protection device, you will burn your building because your conductors and or your equipment will burn and the circuit breaker will not wait, will short circuit and ground fault. Circuit breaker will not, is not there, right? So what happened? That short circuit, the ground fault will escalate into a fire. And I'm not going to tell you what happened if you have a fire in your basement. Um, an ignition right next to um, material that you can ignite. Um, you get yourself a burn house. Any comments, any question, guys, about the overcurrent protection devices? This is just the beginning. Talking about fuses and circuit breakers, we will be talking more and more as we go into the commercial industrial. The only thing I would like you guys to know right now is that, that the only type of overcurrent protection device we use in dwellings, well, not the only type, the main type is circuit breakers. Um, Thermomagnetic circuit breaker, single pole, two pole, rated for 240, 120. That's what we use for dwellings. As we move forward, you're going to have them rated for 250 or 600 volt, where you can uh, use them in 28, 120, or 480, 277 system. Any comments, any questions? I think that's all what we had for that particular. And don't worry too much about the types of the fuses, like I said, as we go more in the commercial industry, we'll talk more about what's a current limiting fuse and, and so forth. It's not the topic for the day. Comments, questions, Karen? Okay, that's all we have for you guys.